Great, all happy there with your belts and things. Lovely. What we'll do is take off uh, towards the southeast. We'll go around the township, and I'll just do a couple of zigzags as we head up the lake, so you can look into the observatory and things as we go. Take by traffic, Alpha Sulu rolling. One one left turn to make it. beautiful in the autumn too, it's sort of uh, a lot of the silt has just settled out, very settled, so it, um, we often get a um, slightly slightly less milky colour, it's really nice. It's going to fly past the observatory if you're on the left here, down at the Mount John Observatory below on our left hand side. Just two up the lake now, I don't know, we've got Mount Hay uh, sheep station on our right here. And we've got Mount Hay, then we've got Richmond Station, then we've got Mount Gerald, and we've got Lilybank. So we've got four, essentially four sheep stations on our right. On our left we've got Glenmore and then Godley Peak. So we've got about six um, high country farms as we head up the lake. On our left here, Glenmore Station. Now you see how they irrigate from the nearby Cass River? The water comes down under gravity and they run it through um, border dike irrigation. So they irrigate a lot of the paddocks here, make hay and silage. Further north, uh, Godley Peaks do a similar thing from the Mistake River, and they actually use big um, rotary irrigators rather than border dike. And if you look across on our right, you see how there's lots of terraces going up. That's what we call the lateral moraine. So when the glacier came down through here, formed all those lateral moraines, which is the edge. The lake is the main part of the ice that would have gouged out this uh, area that the lake's formed. The lake's 120 metres deep in its deepest spot. The lake. There's still um, silty water coming in, but not nearly in uh, the concentrations as uh, at other times of the year. Is that a shelf down there? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, 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 yeah, it's where the silt's built out and formed a little bit of a shelf there. It goes quite, quite deep to very shallow. You might get some nice photos as we head up here. If you take photos directly down, you get some really arty shots of the, um, of the braided river system here. Yeah, it's quite, this is actually, yeah, it says this time of the year is about the least amount of silt you see in the water. Um, we've got a lot of rain in the Alps. That water can be almost um, uh, grey colour. But a beautiful shot looking back on our left now, because you're going to get a little bit of that uh, braids there. So we've still got Godley Peaks um, farm on our left, the Merino sheep grazing right up into the valleys. On our, sorry, on our left, uh, Godley Peaks. On our right coming up is Lilybank Station. There's a river here on both sides. The river, uh, Macaulay River and Godley River. So they keep it quite isolated up here. You can drive through the Macaulay River and then carry on right up that river up around the corner, up into the Macaulay, and there's some uh, beautiful areas up there. It's quite a nice community hut built up there. But you can see the topography of these valleys, very different, they're very um, broad, open valleys. Uh, typical glaciated valleys, quite steep sides and a very flat bottom. So the Godley Valley ahead of us here is a, um, a beautiful valley, it's quite long, we'll be flying up it for the next um, four or five minutes. Coming up through five and a half thousand feet. See the colours back on our right here? We get some lovely colours with the old um, metamorphic rock there and uh, weathering. Some of that um, ground over there is really coloured. Yeah, I think it's almost an oxide layer, Simon. It's sort of yeah. a weathering. They call it a weathering rind on the rock. And see below, you see the rivers have got a bit more silting up here now. See how the colour's changing slightly? A little bit more silt in the water, we're not too far away, we're going to head up into the top of the Godley in a moment. And um, we're getting closer and closer to the glaciers, so the water has a lot more silt in it here. When you're walking around you don't really notice it, but you see even on these hills on our left you can see little terraces around them, little shelves. And um, 
you know, from a glaciation point of view, they're just showing all the different advances of the ice. So when you're down on foot, you know, you know you're on something, but you wonder what it is. But from here, you can see those little lines around the hills, and they're all just little shelves or lateral moraines formed by the ice as it's come round and down. Mounted up on our right here is Mount Sibbald. It's a bit over 9,000 feet high, and if you carry on up, you should go over here into the Rangatata. So we're not far, we're only about two or three minutes flight time from going up into the Rangatata. Yeah, a little bit of um, just a very light sea breeze on the west coast. Um, we'll pop up soon and we'll just be sitting along the divide here, but don't worry us to just want to bring you around to the top of the godly. See the lakes below us here? So this is where the um, silt's coming from that flows into Lake Tekapo. Um, as the ice moves up at the top of the Godly Valley here, it's grinding up the rock to form these very silty areas with silty water. Washing down to the lake. I'll do a bit of a zigzag up in here. Up as we approach the Godly Lakes, it's 6, six plumbing north, shortly southwest. Get a good view on our left here shortly, Bobby. I'll come around and a really spectacular area at the top of the Godly. It's um, um, got a, several branches that sort of work their way in here. A beautiful area. These are these are collectively we call the Godly Lakes. So that's Lake uh, Class and behind us, and then these two are the Godly Lakes. And Seeley Pass is just to the north of us. It's one of the lower passes throughout the west coast. Oh, we'll just keep climbing out to the southwest. Yeah. Yep, we'll just keep, you can see Mount Ely to Beaumont and we'll get some, a little bit of cloud, um, as you've noticed along the divide here, we'll just pop over and have a look at towards the water row, on our way out. I'll just head back towards the south, which is a bit clearer for a start. Well, we'll go round it, we'll just, there's just a little bit of puffy stuff here, so we'll have a look over the top, at the moment. It's cold down there, isn't it? Yeah, yep. Coming up through 8,000 feet in a moment, right at the very top of the Godly. So you can see it's, it's you know, just a bit more alpine than the areas that you've been, and we're right on the divide now, so on a permanent snow and ice. right down the Godly Valley towards Lake Tekapo gives you some idea of the distance we've travelled now. So they keep climbing up now to give you a different perspective. Just see, you just see through the water, I'll just get a bit more height and we'll pop round to that area in a moment to give you a quick look. How fast are we going? At the moment we're doing about um, 96 knots or 100 knots, so about 180 kilometres an hour. We're just climbing quite slowly. Just going to bring you back into the very top of the uh, Murchison Glacier now. This is our uh, second largest. We're coming into the Murchison. Are you guys warm enough back there? Doing alright. Just pop that heat on a bit. Um, it's a good question. So it's about. Oh, it's not bad. It's about plus four. Yeah, it's a little bit of just a very light westerly, so often the years a bit warmer. Alpha Fox Rod 1 we'll get, north um, of the Copeland Pass. Interesting temperature. Um, north as we go into the winter time, we've got quite often get temperature inversions where yeah. normally as you climb, every thousand feet roughly the temperature drops two degrees, just on average. Oh, um, but in the winter time, we can often leave a you know minus 10 in the morning, and if we climb up, you'll find that it might be zero degrees at 5,000. Yeah. Especially if there's a westerly just starting over the Alps, it's very cold in the valleys and still. As you yeah, climb. It goes Lake Mathis. 8,000 parachute drop, Fox, 3 minutes. Where's that? That, that radio call, he's at Fox Glacier. Yep, doing parachute drop here. Yeah. We'll just pop up a little bit here, guys. Actually, a little bit of cloud just forming in the water row, so um, we'll just have a look down from the top. Spend a bit more time where it's nice and clear, I think. Oh, they, they, uh, well the ones at Friends will go up to about 18,000 feet, they've got oxygen in it. Um, normally at Fox you're going to about 12,000 I think. Do you get tar up in this kind of... Not, not as common up here, some you do, but um, normally not as common up in this real steep country, but... Just coming through to the very top of the Tasman Glacier now. Tasman Glacier below. 
a small hut, there's a little hut down below on our left there. Just down, just down there, isn't it? Yeah, actually I put another one down on our right, sitting on the right. If you look down on our right hand side. See the hut down below us here? Yeah. See the tracks where people have been walking down to it? Yeah. So we're right at the very top of the Tasman Glacier. You see the hut down there, Mike? Well, often they fly up to here, but... Yeah. You don't know what that one's called, do you, I suppose? Um, Tesman Saddle, that one was a Kelvin hut, which is a newer one up at the top there, and then that one there's always been referred to as a Tesman Saddle, even though it's down a bit lower. So we're just under 10,000 feet now, and um, right at the top of the Tasman, And I'll just, uh, just, if you get a good shot on our left looking down into the water row. So you can see a uh, lot, lot more bush lower down. This is the water row valley on our left here. See how it turns into a lot of bush further down there. So Mount Ely de Beaumont up on our right here. We've got the shady side of the mountain here still, it gives it a lot of definition. Yeah, I think so. Delta Foxtrot coming home. Coming round at the very top of the France Joseph at the moment. The Alpha Zulu just to the west of the Minarets at 96 to see south west. See the Tasman Sea out there further, and it come right round the very top of the France Joseph now for you. Looking down the Franz Joseph on our right to start with. Right over the very top end of the Franz Joseph Glacier now, over the Neve area. The ice fall uh, trailing away on our right there, dropping down the valley. Davis at 18, you can see that down the north Alpha Foxtrot's lower pioneer at 85 west and shortly north. crevasses there are hundreds of metres deep. Um, some of the very deep ones here go right yeah, through. Just north west of Fox Strip, 5,000 joining Fox Strip. Looking down at the French yeah, Joseph Ice right, Ball area. Phil, got you there. Actually, you keep doing your thing, I'll come across your way, but to the guys. Okay. Oh, I see him down there. Last. Yeah, Just if you hop on, I'll put him on the left side shortly. ice and the snow melts down through the summertime so you're left with a very hard surface almost ice. Just depends 
We had a little bit of fresh snow lately, so there probably is a layer of snow on top now. Right, the middle of summertime, it tends to be more ice. Alpha Sigma, left-hand orbit, then climbing northeast. Alpha Sigma, Pioneer, Richard, 9-1, Alpha Sigma, Climbing now over the very top of the Fox, heading down towards Mount Cook. Very common the cloud on the west coast here, even on a perfect day, we just get a bit of cloud over the rainforest areas. It's not cloudy way down there. It'll be clear and further out, the, the cloud often forms along the foothills here, and then be, you can see out towards the sea, it's quite clear. Yeah, yep, just climbing now. Mount Tears, but up on our left here, our second the highest mountain, 11,500 feet high. Cook on our left, so we've got plenty of time, just going to keep climbing up and then we'll come back round. So Mount Tasman and Mount Cook, we're just up through 10,000, we'll keep popping up. Oh, yep, yeah, Mount Cook's a big one coming up, just, um, sorry, I've just been wandering around getting a bit of height on, a bit of a climb up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come past the southern end here and we'll just do a nice zigzag. side, Bobby, we'll come right round. They do climb here, but normally they climb round the other side. So we'll just come past the southern peak here. We're at 11,000 feet now. It's going to shoot out to the north uh, east. I'm going to go through Pioneer Pass in a moment. You're going to love these shot from there looking back. Just going to come round the shady side here for a moment. We're just still climbing. We're up through 11 and a half. No wind around there. It's nice with a wee bit of wind that helps us get up a bit. Oh, right, at, right. You can't really see anymore, but right on this northern end here, just underneath the left wing. So a lot of the climbing happens up the northern end here. Obviously, there's Fox Theatre at 11.5, climbing northwest Pine Pass. Cook Bernard Charlie Kilo, joining from the Terminal 13. See the plateau hut down below us here, Bobby. Just down below, see the little nest where a lot of the climbing leaves from? You going round again, Tim? Yeah, I'll just do one quick circuit here, Phil. Then we'll be descending south east in a minute. It's just too nice, isn't it? Yeah, yep, sure is. Alpha Foxtrot, the Elsa Pass on descent now through 87 south east. Well, I'm just going to turn to the west here, then I'll lift that left wing in a minute, and it uh, should give you a nice, I'll just pop up another three or 400 feet. Should get a good view along Mount Tasman, right along Mount Cook. I usually come round twice from this angle at this height, but you'll get some lovely views. Is that the sea out of there? Yeah, this is Tasman Sea, yep. Get out, I thought it was clear. Yeah, no, that's Tasman Sea. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Pioneer Pass, 11 8, so we still. If you get ready on the left here, we should get a nice shot coming round from the north aspect. Looking right over Mount Tasman towards Mount Cook with Lake Pukaki behind. Quite a nice contrast on the mountain. So we're on our left there, looking along the highest part of the country. We're at 12,000 feet now. And I'll just keep that view swinging round on our left. 
So that's my favourite view, just on our left there now. That left wing is yours at the moment. Keep going round. This way. I don't get too close. Uh, I'll keep. Yeah, we're about a mile away. Just trying to keep about a mile if I can. I'll come round and then you'll look right along that ridge at the moment from the south here. Doesn't look like a mile, does it? No, it's quite deceptive. There you go, looking right along the summit ridge on our left there. on the ground. 